Okay, in this problem, we're told that there's a heated metal plate in the xy plane centered at x squared plus y squared is less than or equal to 25. So it's a disk of radius 5. And it's heated at the point xy equals negative 2 square roots 2 comma 2 square root 2. And it's heated such that the partial derivative with respect to time or the partial derivative of the temperature with respect to x is equal to 3 degrees Celsius per meter and the partial derivative of the temperature with respect to y is equal to negative 1 degree Celsius per meter. And we're asked to calculate the partial derivative of the temperature with respect to r and the partial derivative of the temperature with respect to theta where we're reminded that x is equal to r cosine theta and y is equal to r sine theta in polar coordinates. So first we're going to want to verify that our point x, y is, in the, is on the plate actually. So if we take negative 2 square roots 2, 2 square roots 2 and plug it into x squared plus y squared, we see that this is going to be equal to equals 16, which is less than or equal to 25, so it's on the plate. Now we're told that the uh, partial derivatives at this point are equal to 3 degrees Celsius per meter and negative 1 degree Celsius per meter. So we want to verify that when, oh, looks like I forgot to write down the, we want to find the partial derivative when r is equal to 4 and theta is equal to 3 pi over 4. So So we want to calculate the partial derivative of the temperature with respect to r at the point 4, 3 pi over 4, and the partial derivative of the temperature with, with respect to theta at 4, 3 pi over 4. So we want to verify that when we plug in um, r equal to 4, theta equal to 3 pi over 4 for our x and our y, that we get the same point x, y, because otherwise um, the given information is useless to us. So we are told that r equals 4 and theta equals 3 pi over 4. Plug that into our x of r theta. So we get So we see that that equals 4 times the negative square root 2 over 2, which simplifies to negative 2 square roots of 2. And we see that that's what our x coordinate should be. Do the same for y. We see that our y coordinate is 2 square roots of 2, and that matches what our y is there. So that tells us that we can use this partial derivative in our formula
for the partial derivative of the temperature with respect to R, we have the partial derivative of the temperature with respect to X times the partial derivative of the temperature or of X with respect to R plus the partial derivative of the temperature with respect to Y times the partial derivative of Y with respect to R. And so we know that at the point negative 2 square root of 2, 2 square root of 2, which is the same as our point R theta for 3 pi over 4, the partial derivative of the temperature with respect to X is 3 degrees Celsius per meter. So if we evaluate The total, if we evaluate it at that point, we can plug in our 3. Now we're going to want the partial derivative of x with respect to r. So we know that x we know that x is equal to r cosine theta and y is equal to r sine theta. So we'll first take the partial derivative of x with respect to r. So we see that the partial derivative of x, x with respect to r is cosine theta, and the partial derivative of x with respect to theta is equal to negative r sine theta. Doing the same with the y's. Is see that the partial derivative of y with respect to r is sine theta and the partial derivative of y with respect to theta is r cosine theta. Okay, so now we're evaluating it at the point r equals 4, theta equals 3 pi over 4. So we're going to want to plug in our values here when we uh, substitute in for the partial derivative. So the partial derivative of x with respect to r is cosine theta and theta is 3 pi over 4. And then we add our negative 1 times the partial derivative of y with respect to r, which is sine theta, where theta is 3 pi over 4. So we see that um, our total is three times the negative square root two over two minus square root two over two, which is negative. 4 square root 2 over 2, which is negative 2 square root 2. So we see that the partial derivative of t with respect to r is equal to negative 2 square roots of 2. Of course, that's what, when r is equal to 4 and theta is 3 pi over 4. And now we can take the partial derivative of the temperature with respect to theta, and that is
the same as the one for r, except we replace the r's with thetas. So we know that the partial derivative of the temperature with respect to x is 3, and the partial derivative of x with respect to theta is negative r sine theta. So that's negative 4 sine 3 pi over 4. And then the partial derivative of the temperature with respect to y is negative 1. And the partial derivative of y with respect to theta is r cosine theta, where r is 4 and theta is 3 pi over 4. So we can evaluate this. And we see that we can pull out a uh, negative 4. We can simplify these a little bit. So this is negative 6 square root 2, and this is negative 2 square root 2. So that's negative 8 square root 2. And that is our final answer. So You know what, I just uh, realized that I took the cosine wrong, so I'm going to change that a little bit. It's going to be, if you could look back, you'll see that we had This is what we had for our d t d theta, and it should actually be a plus 4. So that's going to bring our total to negative 4 square roots of 2, rather than eight, negative 8. Okay, so now we want to know what these mean. So the partial derivative of the temperature with respect to r is essentially if we moved along the radius of the disk, what would the change in the temperature be and from that point? And for the partial derivative of the temperature with respect to theta, that is as we move around in a circle around, along the disk. So So there's our d theta. And there's our dr. So our total answer is negative 2 square root 2 for the partial derivative of the temperature with respect to r. And the partial derivative of the temperature with respect to theta is negative 4 square roots of 2.